We begin in Guinea, where the coup is fueling fears of worsening shortages on global commodity markets. The country is rich in iron ore, nickel, gold and diamonds. But above all, bauxite, a rock of aluminum-bearing materials. After Australia, Guinea is the world's largest exporter of bauxite. Important, of course, for the manufacture of cars and aircraft. In the wake of the unrest, the price of aluminum rose to a 10-year high. Now, despite its wealth in terms of raw materials, the country is still poor and underdeveloped. In the World Bank's Duis Business Ranking, Guinea ranks 156 out of 190. And the GDP per capita is only 1,100 US dollars. In Nigeria, by comparison, that figure is twice as high. Now, our correspondent Idris Uwais is following this story. He joins us now from Abuja. Welcome, Idris. Now, Idris, behind this coup, of course, was a strong current of economic discontent. What more can you tell us? Well, Guinea is one of the poorest countries in West Africa upon all its own resources. People are quite impoverished. This coup d'etat that happens is going to add to the situation in the country because already when the embattled uh, president who was overthrown by the military junta yesterday, he increased foil price, which has added to skyrocketed prices, and then the inflation has gone over 10% in the country. So it is really going to be a serious problem for this right. West African nation. Now, what kind of economic impact will the coup have on the everyday lives of citizens, Idris? These are the people that will be worst hit because with the curfew and the military junta operating in the country now, uh, many, many people are now even scared to come out. They are already impoverished. There is a curfew. That means they are going to stay indoors for some time until when they stabilize. Even if, 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 it, if it has stabilized, it's a very weak economy that many people are finding it difficult to even feed themselves in the country. So we are going to see more hardship for the people of Guinea Conakry, more impoverishment, more high security prices because the borders are closed. Nobody is even willing to go right. to Guinea now as the situation it is. Now, things definitely set to get harder there, as you say. Now, earlier we mentioned the importance of mining to the country's economy. What do you think will happen to mining operations? Will the turmoil be disruptive to them? Mining is going to be terrible in Guinea because so many artisanal miners that are going on cannot now operate under this military junta. And it is going to be impact on both the government, the private sector, and the ordinary people who rely on small-scale mining to be able to export certain things legal or illegally. So it is going to be hard on the government because we don't know what ECOWAS, what African Union are going to come out with. There might be sanctions in the near future. Sanctions might lead to not exporting the product right. they rely on to other nations. Thank you very much. Our correspondent Idris Awais there for us talking about the economic impact of the coup in Guinea.